Hello, <clears throat> this is the last, the fifth segment of chapter one, the dynamic earth. Um, I had to finish the fourth segment really abruptly because I accidentally trashed the slide and I needed it. So here am I. Uh, this is about the biosphere. Biosphere is all life on earth, as you know. Uh, the animals and plants on land, in the sea and in the air. Um, Probably you all know that the microorganisms have the most common form of life uh, and they form a relatively narrow zone above the earth and below the earth. If you think about the deep sea, the trenches where there is pretty active life, uh, the div diversity of life. There is about 1.6 million non -spe known species, but if you look down there, it could be that there are 30 million or more species which you don't know about. Uh, it's interesting uh, fact that about half of all the known species are uh, insects. And another interesting fact that insects actually can stand the radioactivity, radiation more than we do. So if actually we get to the point where we kill ourselves with, um, with radioactive weapons, that uh, we're all going to die, but the cockroaches and all the insects will um, happily survive um, on Earth. So that's going to be the next generation right there. Um, the local environment will always control the distribution of life. If you think about the temperature, the pressure, the chemistry, uh, so we do have wide, wide range of environmental conditions, such as, such as the polar region, um, the tropical environment, the deserts, um, ocean environment, and so on. The, the biosphere also have a very important um, role um, on Earth and its evolution because it's a geologic force. For example, during the Precambrian, we didn't have free oxygen in the atmosphere. And actually, the oxygen formation happened because of the cyanobacteria, that was the very first widespread organisms. The, the cyanobacteria, or blue-green algae, we also call them, or stromatolites, actually, they have a bunch of names, uh, they photosynthesized. So when something photosynthesizing, remember we talked about this, uh, they used the, this carbon dioxide, which we had a lot from the volcanic eruptions, uh, the sunlight, which we have a lot, we had a lot, and uh, water to make sugar and oxygen. So you can imagine the whole earth was covered at one time basically with, um, with the stromatolites or cyanobacteria, and they made a whole lot of oxygen. So basically, these stromatolites, the biosphere, is responsible for our current atmospheric composition. Um, the other thing is that it also ruled by the precipitation of calcium carbonate or atmosphere. So that is also related to, to biosphere. Um, also the fossils, these are very important because if you just think about it, um, about 10%, let me rephrase it, we have this much life on earth. But if you look at the whole Earth history, the, all the life which is present today on Earth represents 10% of all the living things which have been living on Earth throughout time. So this is very interesting. Okay, the last thing we have to talk about in this chapter is the Earth internal structure. Um, at one time, actually, when Earth had formed as a planet, it was completely um, uniform. Uh, every element was completely distributed randomly. But because of the amount of radioactive elements present on Earth, uh, they actually warmed the whole uh, Earth up and it became completely molten. And in a molten, uh, in a molten body, what happens? When it's molten, the heaviest elements are going into the middle down and the lighter elements are on top. So that's what happened. We call this uh, process differentiation and differentiation happened by density. So inside the earth we have the heaviest elements 
and on top outside we have the light test and what we can't touch actually there is proof for this because on top you got the gas right below there is the water and right below you got the rocks so gas is the least dense water is the next and the rocks are the most dense from out the stuff we can touch but like as we go down it's getting more and more dense the next slide is one of the most important thing you will have to know and actually when we meet in class uh, make me to draw a better drawing than this one here uh, I can actually tell you some uh, I will ask you on the test to please draw uh, and label this when when I say draw and label this that means that you have to do everything just like here the only thing I'm missing here is that the inner core is solid it's iron and nickel Fe and I and the density is 11 cubic kilometer per uh, gram per cubic kilometer. Now the outer core is liquid, we know that, and the composition of the outer core is also iron and nickel. Iron and nickel. Uh, the fact that it's liquid and it's it's turning around uh, with the solid core inside of it is generate earth magnetic field so it's very very important to know other than that I think the drawing is pretty okay make sure that you will know the asthenosphere that above the asthenosphere we have the lithosphere plate and that includes the uppermost mantle and the crust and it's important that you know that we have two kinds of crust the oceanic and continental crust you got to know everything the density for everything it's very important that you do know like that the continental crust is 2.7 gram per cubic centimeter that if you wanted to characterize it with one rock it'd be granite and also that the oceanic crust is 3.3 gram per cubic centimeter if you wanted to characterize it with one rock it's basalt also important that the oceanic crust the oldest one is 200 million years old but from the continental crust, the oldest one is billions of years old. So this is a very important slide. For sure it will come back and uh, you have to know all of it. Okay, bye.